welcome to epg patshala dear students today we are going to discuss about the principle of generation of tidal power from this module you will be able to understand what is a tide what are the causes of tide what are how the tidal energy is converted what are the different types of tidal turbines what are the advantages and limitation of tidal energy so you may be aware of different ocean phenomena like waves currents tides and winds you can see the difference is the between these phenomena waves are generally caused on the ocean surface due to winds they generally keep varying in height and frequency by location and the driving forces but tides are the periodic rise and fall of water levels that occur daily currents are formed due to the water velocity which could be due to tidal streams or in general due to water particle velocity let's see what are the causes of this tides you may be aware of the um, law newton's law of universal gravitation this law states that every object that has mass in the universe is attracted to every other object the gravitational force between these objects is directly proportional to the product of these masses and is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between these two masses the greater the mass of the objects and closer they are together greater is their gravitational attraction thus gravitational forces for points on earth caused by moon vary depending on their distances from the moon also the direction of the gravitational attraction between most earth particles and center of the moon is at an angle relative to a line connecting the center of the earth and the moon due to this the gravitational force at different particles are different the centripetal force there is another force this force is required to keep the planets in their orbits and is provided by the gravitational force between them and the sun this force connects an orbiting body to its parent pulling the object inward toward the parent the gravitational force between the earth and the moon provides a centripetal force to hold the moon in its orbit around the earth the gravitational force between particles on earth and moon is different from the centripetal force to keep the particles in a circular orbit the difference between these two forces at different locations leads to some resultant forces which are small if these forces have a significant horizontal component that is tangential to the earth surface it produces tidal bulges on the earth which are known as the tide generating forces these are inversely proportional to the cube of the distance between each point on the earth and the center of the moon or sun the sun also causes tidal bulges one oriented towards the sun and the other away from it however these bulges are much smaller than the ones caused by the moon because the sun is 390 times farther from earth than the moon thus the moon exerts over two times the gravitational pull of the sun as far as tides are connect, concerned the lunar bulges are two in number similar to that of solar one towards the moon and the other away from it due to the above tides depend on the lunar day and hence high tides occur every 12 hour and 25 minutes the time between two high tide is called as tidal period these would be less high as we go north or south away from the equator the vertical difference between high and low tide is called the tidal range when the sun and moon are aligned either with the moon between earth and sun or with moon on the side opposite to the sun the tide generating forces from both sun and moon add up and leads to a high tidal range this high high tide is known as spring tide when the low tidal range occur it is called neap tide tides result in two phenomena in two phenomena 
large volumes of rising and falling of water leading to varying heads. The receding and rising water moves in and out with a certain speed lending to fairly high water velocity at certain locations. These speeds can be used to harness the energy. Let's see how this tidal energy is converted or how the tides are converted to energy form. The converters depend on whether we use the head created due to large water volumes or velocities of tidal streams or ocean currents. Tidal energy converters are classified mainly as barrage based tidal energy converters and tidal stream based tidal energy converters. Let's see what is a barrage based tidal energy converter. Barrage is an artificial wall built across the tidal stream and connects to landmass on both ends. These are similar to our conventional hydroelectric power stations. These are more suitable for energy generation where tidal difference is high. Barrage based tidal energy harnessing becomes feasible for tidal ranges greater than 5 meter that is approximately 16 feet. The tide creates head difference on the two sides of the wall. The barrage houses turbine and the water from high level side is guided over the turbine blades to the low level side through specially designed conduits. Water imparts momentum to the turbine blades thus driving the turbine wheel. The water flow through the turbines reverses with reversing of the tide from low to high and from high to low. Accordingly, direction of rotation of the turbines also reverses. The shaft of this turbine wheel drives an electric generator through a gearbox. An electric generator produces electric power which then is supplied to grid via power cables. Let's see the other type, the tidal stream based energy converter. These are turbines which harness kinetic energy in the tidal stream which is a fast flowing body of seawater created by tides. These types can also be used in any oceanic location where naturally occurring ocean currents are large enough. These are also known as hydrokinetic turbines operate in a similar way to wind energy turbines. These turbines are to be placed inside water either on seabed or to be suspended from a floater thus intercepting the water flow. These turbines drive electric generators coupled to them through a gearbox for generating electricity. This electricity is transmitted via under water power cables to the nearest shore where it can be consumed or can be transmitted further via power grid. Let's see what are the types of tidal turbines. This classification of tidal turbine is based on the form of energy to be harnessed that is potential energy by barrage based tidal energy converter and kinetic energy by tidal stream based hydrokinetic turbines. Turbines form barrage based tidal energy converters employ axial flow turbines named bulb turbines or tubular turbines to operate at low heads and high flow rates offered by tidal barrages. The name is due to large bulb at the center of the water tube that houses the turbine. This bulb holds the generator, wicket gate and a runner. Wicket gate is essentially a set of guide, set of guide vanes that control the flow of water over the turbine blades. These turbines are large in size and weight. It adds to the capital cost. One of the bulb turbine units in La Rand's tidal energy plant has a tip diameter of 5.35 meters and it weighs 470 tons. It has 4 blades and 24 guide vanes. Its operating head range is from 3 meter to 11 meter with peak output of 10 megawatt. You can see in this picture cutaway section of a large bulb turbine. Turbines for barrage based tidal energy converters. The flow over this turbine reverses during tight cycle. The blades of these turbines are designed to suit this flow reversal. 
Rotor blades of the bow turbines look very similar to a ship's propeller. By virtue of the blade construction, this turbine spins in opposite direction as the flow reverses. Let's see the tidal stream turbines. The classification of this turbine according to flow direction with respect to the axis of rotation of the turbine blades into two groups, axial flow tidal stream turbines and cross flow tidal stream turbines. The axial flow turbines have their axis of rotation oriented along the incoming water flow. Bulb turbines which we have explained is an example for this axial flow turbine. These turbines have two or more radial blades. The construction of axial flow tidal stream turbine is similar to our modern wind turbines. Axial flow turbines have been oriented continuously in order to maximize energy capture by aligning their rotational axis with the direction of water flow. However, the direction of rotation of turbines of this class changes as the tidal stream reverses the flow of water with change in tide. Also, all turbines of this type experience huge drag which has to be countered appropriately by thrust bearings. The mass holding these turbines has to be designed to withstand the overturning drag moment. So you can see in this picture the, there is a main upright and you have two points deep tip and the shallow tip and under which you have the blades in the axial flow turbines which is uh, pictured in the, uh, in the second one. The first one is a schematic diagram while the second one is the artistic impression of this which is under development. So coming to the cross flow turbines. The rotational axis of the rotor is perpendicular to the incoming water stream and the water crosses the axis as it flows through the turbine. Blades of these turbines undergo a complete rotation around their own axis that is known as tumble as they rotate around the turbine axis. The relative motion between each of these blades and the incoming water generates a hydrodynamic force on the blade which is responsible for generating a moment around the turbine axis. Sum of moments exerted by water on all blades generates a torque at the turbine shaft which in turn is used to generate electricity by coupling the shaft to an electric generator through a gearbox. The torque transmitted to the shaft varies within a single rotation as the blades change position with rotation. This variation is also called as torque ripple. Designers have to ensure that this torque ripple is kept to a minimum for an optimum design with long life. Blade toe section of cross flow turbine is generally of hydrodynamic shape and its design enables all turbines of this class to rotate in the same direction even when the water flows in the opposite direction. These turbines are sensitive to the minor changes in tidal stream direction in the same tide phase as they are mounted on the seabed. Let's see the classification of cross flow tidal stream. It's further categorized into horizontal axis turbines and vertical axis turbine. The rotational axis of a horizontal axis cross flow turbine rotor is oriented perpendicular to the incoming water stream. The number of blades in turbines of this class can be varied. Most commonly two or three bladed designs are considered. It is simple to construct and handle in marine conditions. In a vertical axis cross flow turbine, the rotational axis of the rotor is vertically oriented. It is perpendicular to the flow direction of the incoming water stream akin to its horizontal axis counterpart. The advantage of this orientation is that the turbine performance does not get affected by all possible changes in flow direction of incoming water stream. For all flow directions, the turbine blades rotate in the same direction and it can generate power even when it is not completely immersed. This is the classification. We have, you can see that hydrokinetic turbine, we have already seen it is classified into axial flow and cross flow and the cross flow into horizontal and vertical axis and coming to the vertical axis hydrodynamic tidal stream turbines. So you can see the different configurations of cross flow turbines. These are Darius turbines with straight blades parallel to axis, helical turbines, 
also termed as gorlo turbines with blade following a helical path around the axis sevonius rotor as shown in this illustrations in the cross flow turbines the use of h darriers and squirrel cage darriers is rather common however the instances of classical type of darriers turbines with curved blades being used to produce hydropower are nearly non existent the gorlo type the gorlo turbines where the blades are of helical structure generate lower torque triple and have better starting characteristics as compared to all the derivatives of darius turbines sevonius rotors are designed to operate on differential drag on play on blades on either side of the axis exerted by the water stream their blades may consist of straight or skewed blades of weights they suffer from very high drag and are not suitable for large scale power generation the disadvantages associated with cross flow tidal stream turbines are these turbines generate low starting torque as they are affected by torque ripple repeating changes in the shaft torque these turbines may not be of self starting for low current speeds and therefore some kind of external starting mechanisms need to be adopted however for high current speeds these turbines can be designed to have good self starting characteristics so we have seen the turbine different types of turbines and all now we will see what is the potential in our country to harness this energy the barrage based tidal energy harnessing becomes feasible for the tidal ranges greater than 5 meters that is approximately 16 feet so in the world india is one of the 20 locations on earth with tides this high gulf of kambad in gujarat on the west coast have the maximum tidal range of 11 meter with average tidal range of 6.77 meter and have a maximum tidal range of 8 meter with average tidal range of 5.23 meter also a few locations in andaman have high tidal currents where tidal stream based hydrokinetic turbines can harness tidal energy deeper regions in gulf of kambad and gulf of kutch are suitable for tidal stream based hydrokinetic turbines for harnessing tidal energy whereas shallow regions of these gulfs are suitable for tidal barrage based energy conversion the delta regions of hugli river and mahanadi river and creeks nearby mumbai coast offer potential for the development of small to medium capacity barrage based tidal power plants so with tidal barrage technology a study says that gulf of kambad and gulf of kutch has an estimated potential of 9000 megawatt and 2000 megawatt respectively also a few places in sundarbans in west bengal like durga dwani creek have a potential of 100 megawatt so the total estimated tidal energy potential in india is 11.5 gigawatt according to this study conducted by iit in collaboration with a company this study was conducted by iit madras let's see what are the advantages of this tidal energy tidal energy is a renewable energy source because the energy it produces is free and clean as no fuel is needed and no waste by products are produced tidal energy has the potential to produce a great deal of green energy tidal energy is not expensive to operate and maintain compared to other forms of renewable energies low visual impact as the tidal turbines are mainly if not totally submerged beneath the water low noise pollution as any sound generated is transmitted through the water high predictability as high and low tides can be predicted years in advance unlike our wind energy tidal barrages provide protection against flooding and land damage large tidal reservoirs have multiple uses and can create recreational lakes and areas where before there were none but it has limitations tidal energy is not always a constant energy source as it depends on the strength and flow of the tides which themselves are affected by gravitational effects of the moon and the sun tidal energy requires a suitable site where the tides and tidal streams are consistently strong it must be able to withstand forces of nature resulting in high capital 
construction and maintenance cost. High power distribution cost to send the generated power from the submerged devices to the land using long underwater cables. Intermittent power generation only that means it only generates power 10 hours a day during the ebb and flow of the tides. The changes it changes to estuary ecosystem and an increase in the coastal erosion where tides are concentrated. Build up of silt, sediments and pollutants within the tidal barrage from rivers and streams flowing into basin as it is unable to flow out into the sea is also a limitation. The danger to fish and other sea life as they get stuck in the barrage or suck through the tidal turbine blades is also a limitation. So to summarize, in this module we have learned about the causes of tides, the potential of tidal energy in India, how the turbines converting the energy are classified and also we have seen different types of turbines and also in this module we have seen that the advantages and limitations of this tidal energy. Thank you.